Hello, you sentient ball of stardust. My name is Casey Davis. I'm a therapist, and I'm an author of the book, How to Keep House While Drowning, where I talk about ways to make it a little bit easier to take care of yourself when you're overwhelmed, stressed, have mental health issues, physical health issues, or maybe you're just in a hard season of life. Maybe you're looking for a place that you can come and listen to some practical advice. This is a podcast for all of the self-help rejects. We're going to talk about skills for survival and self-kindness. And I'm going to leave the pop psychology at the door. I promise not to tell you to meditate or to journal. We're just going to give you some really insightful conversations with hopefully some practical advice. So I don't believe you need to pick yourself up by the bootstraps. I don't want you to just try harder. And I don't believe that laziness exists. So join me over on Struggle Care, where we can find compassionate solutions that help us function a little bit better. Are you struggling to conceive? You have options. And at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group, we'll make sure you have the guidance and support you need. Preg is known for individualized fertility care that's unique to every patient. We take the time to provide a reassuring and empowering experience because we believe that you deserve nothing less. Let us help you on your journey to parenthood. Visit us at pregonline.com to learn more. Get the guidance and support you need at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group. Stove Leg Media, igniting conversation. Hey guys, it's me, your host, Elena Grace, and you're listening to I've Been Thinking. So I've spent a lot of time thinking about what I would say today. I'm 25 years old, y'all. That means that I was six years old. I was in first grade the day the world literally stopped turning. For international listeners, you may remember or have heard about the September 11th terrorist attacks before For younger listeners, you may have been babies, or maybe you weren't even born yet. And that's something that's really hard for me to grasp, actually, because it was such a huge moment for me, even at six years old. As a graduate assistant, I read quite a few research essays and opinion pieces about 9-11 from 18 and 19 year olds who weren't even alive when it happened, some of them. I was literally sick to my stomach reading some of them, seeing these children refer to it like it was this faraway concept like Pearl Harbor or the Civil War decades away because it happened before they were born. They didn't watch it happen in real time. And it didn't affect them the same way that it does me and a lot of us. They didn't grow up with that. They didn't watch it, you know. And so anyway, this episode isn't about that day, though. September 11th, 2001 was absolutely pivotal in the history of the United States and in the history of mankind as we know it. It was also pivotal in my life. I remember for so long I would cry every time my daddy left the house, begging him not to go to Iraq. And then the surge hit, and then he did leave. I was eight the first time. He told me that it was his duty and that so many other brave men and women had given their lives and their time And now it was his turn. Who was he to turn down the call? This episode isn't quite about that, though. It's inspired by it very much. I had a topic picked out for today, actually, and I just kept thinking it just wasn't right. I knew in my heart that it wasn't what I was supposed to do, but I couldn't figure it out exactly. You know, I couldn't figure out what today should focus on, you know, in terms of episodes. Um, so I'm looking at my computer as I, I started writing this. I'm looking at my computer, 
And I realized that I had Googled a quotation a little while back that I heard on an episode of Criminal Minds. You know how they do those little quotes at like the beginning and ending of episodes, usually at the end, I think. (laughs) This one said, True heroism is remarkably sober, very undramatic. It is not the urge to surpass all others at whatever cost, but the urge to serve others at whatever cost. Arthur Ashe. And wow, y'all, that hit me. I realized immediately that that was what today was meant for. It's what my 20th episode was meant for, just to celebrate our heroes. So when you think of a hero, who do you think of? Honestly, if your first thought goes to a Marvel character, that's okay. If you think just something very generic, like firefighters or police or an ambulance driver or a nurse or a Green Army man or the Marine on the commercial, you're not wrong to think of this generic, like, faceless person. Because all of those people, they are all heroes. Do you think of your grandpa who pulled you out of an abusive house or maybe your cousin who didn't come home from Afghanistan, or maybe your dad, the ER doctor, or maybe your mom, the stay-at-home wife who wrangles the kids and keeps everything in check. There's no rules as to who can be your hero. Granted, it would probably be best if it wasn't like Jeffrey Dahmer or Ed Kemper, but (laughs) y'all know what I mean. So... I did some Googling, as usual. I Googled what makes a hero. I looked up the definition for a hero. I asked some friends, what do you think of when you hear the word hero? I had a lot of people say, you know, my dad, my husband, my uncle, blah, 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 these people who are Cops, firefighters, EMTs, nurses, service jobs, you know. To my absolute pride, I had a few people say my dad was a hero to them. Love that. (laughs) Um, A lot of people, for them, it came down to someone who serves And this is my point. A hero is one who serves, who puts themselves on the back burner. But even more importantly, a real hero is one who does so quietly so as not to bring attention to themselves. They don't need the spotlight. That's not why they did what they did. They did it because it was the right thing to do, and they didn't care about their own safety, about their own they didn't care about them, their own selves. They were ready and willing to make any kind of sacrifice necessary to do the right thing. Those nurses that during this pandemic have moved, all of them have moved in together so that they don't expose their families and they've gone weeks and weeks, you know, not seeing their family. Oh, that's incredible. Um, My roommate, Allison, her boyfriend's mom, she is about to go work in um, a hospital in the Navajo Nation because they are severely understaffed and they are just overwhelmed with COVID cases. That's a hero. She's not doing that for any reason other than that she knows that is her job. You know, the people who, I don't know, the guys and girls who go out and do things just for the attention, that's great they did those things, but true heroism is the person who pulls a kid out of the rushing river, you know, who rescues a puppy, whatever, and they don't need 
a news article about them. They do it because, just because. You know, I hate to keep using him as an example. I don't want to embarrass him, but my daddy, he doesn't even like to stand up at a baseball game or whatever when they say, you know, our men and women of the armed forces stand up and let us clap for you. He doesn't need that, and he doesn't want it because he's a hero, He, it, but he doesn't. He's too far too humble to admit that to anybody that he's a hero. He doesn't think that of himself. But that's what makes him that. That he just did his job because it was necessary. And that's that for him. He didn't do it for any reason other than that he knew it was what was needed done. And that's what makes our nurses, our hardworking doctors, some of them, some of them have God complexes. I'm not sure if they're heroes. Uh, <laughs> anybody can have a God complex. Um, but that's what makes our public servants, our, you know, all of those people, our everyday average Joes who jump in just to do what needs done. That's what makes a hero. So I'm going to wrap this up, guys. I didn't want this to be a big, long episode because this is a day to remember those that we have lost and sacrifices that have been made. I wanted to use this day, though, to talk about heroism because I think, first of all, that there is no better day to talk about heroism than September 11th. But secondly, I think it's a term that's thrown around pretty loosely, hero. And not that it's always a bad thing, but I just want to encourage you guys to think about the words that we say, the titles that we give, and the adjectives that we use to describe people because throwing these things around really undermines the real value of the word. And I think I think we do that with a lot of things, but I think that hero is a word that deserves um, a little bit more respect. I don't know. But I highly encourage you today to find your hero and tell them that they are. Let them know how important they are to you. If they're still around, hopefully they are. And if they're not, brag on your hero to somebody. Tell your best friend, tell your mom, post it on Instagram, whatever. And if you do post it on Instagram, I'd love if you tag the podcast in that so I can see who your heroes are. Um, yeah, definitely do that. Tag us on Instagram if you share your heroes. But I really challenge you to think about who your hero is, why they're your hero, and um, let them know. All right, guys. Subscribe to our Patreon um, for early access to episodes and for extra content and to allow me to continue working on this podcast. Go give us a follow on Instagram at I've Been Thinking Pod. Follow us on Twitter and TikTok, too. And let us know what you thought about this episode. I know it was super short, but like I said, I don't want to take away from the gravity of this day. Subscribe to us wherever you listen. And if you use Apple Podcasts, definitely give us those five stars and leave us a good review, hopefully. All right, thanks for listening, guys, and I'll talk at you next week. Have a blessed day, and remember how lucky we all are, and thank a hero. Bye, guys.
Hello, you sentient ball of stardust. My name is Casey Davis. I'm a therapist, and I'm an author of the book, How to Keep House While Drowning, where I talk about ways to make it a little bit easier to take care of yourself when you're overwhelmed, stressed, have mental health issues, physical health issues, or maybe you're just in a hard season of life. Maybe you're looking for a place that you can come and listen to some practical advice. This is a podcast for all of the self-help rejects. We're going to talk about skills for survival and self-kindness. And I'm going to leave the pop psychology at the door. I promise not to tell you to meditate or to journal. We're just going to give you some really insightful conversations with hopefully some practical advice. So I don't believe you need to pick yourself up by the bootstraps. I don't want you to just try harder. And I don't believe that laziness exists. So join me over on Struggle Care, where we can find compassionate solutions that help us function a little bit better. Let's face it, most people aren't making massive turkey feasts on the regular, and after 364 days of not thinking about it, it can be hard to get that bird just right. That's where Instacart, the holiday rescue app, comes in. From getting all the ingredients to prep a full seasonal spread to getting last-minute swamps in a turkey emergency, Instacart has everything a holiday host needs to save face and save dinner. And right now, if you download Instacart, you get free delivery on your first three orders and delivery in as fast as one hour. Offer valid for a limited time. $10 minimum per order. Additional terms apply.